Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I plan to launch some Venus missions. We are approaching the Venus window. We have got three missions that will be built by the time we reach that window. And well, Venus has been a tough customer for us so far. We have not had much success with it. But we'll see what we can do. The active contracts are position a satellite in the equatorial orbit of Venus. Position a satellite in a specific orbit of Venus that will be different from that one, and it'll be difficult to get from one to the other. And then science data from the surface of Venus. And so those are the three that we are building for. And if it turns out that we get the surface science done, then we can pick up another contract for the next opportunity for Venus, and that's uncrewed Venus landing. And that's very lucrative, but we don't want to pick that up until we're sure we can do it because the duration is only 730 days and the failure will take all of our money. So we will need to, we will need to wait on that, <laughs> just for safety's sake. These other ones give us plenty of time. You can see the deadline, 6,883 days. Uh, this, well, that's Mars. Uh, 7,000 days, 6,000 days. So we'll have plenty of opportunities to do that. Let us see what we can do with the missions that we have planned here. And if something goes wrong, at least we'll know what to fix for the next time. But hopefully we'll get it right this time. It's been a rough go. Okay, here we go with our first launch. Throttle up. SAS. Oh, that was that throttle. Uh, this is the new computer now. Okay, hopefully it's gonna stay up now because <laughs> I've got a joystick throttle. You can hear it uh, when I shut off the throttle or maximize the throttle. You'll hear a little click. Obviously the staging is wrong there. This doesn't make me feel good about how I prepared this rocket. Um, oh, so two engines only? Was there supposed to be only two engines? Mm, let me see. Or should we light all three? It can get off the ground like this. I think I think it was supposed to be just the two engines. That's a lot of thrust weight ratio. Could work. To our benefit. But we might as well wait on that and have it get the better efficiency. Less drag that way too. No, it depends. We can split the difference. But okay. Right. Hope I'm doing the right thing. Ignition. Ooh, interesting sound. And launch. Oh, it's going up. All is green. In fact, the rocket is sort of reflecting the green right now. Okay, core ignition. And booster separation. So basically treating the core as uh, as a second stage here, but we got some roll as a result of the booster separation. We don't have a way of controlling roll on this stage right now. Okay, that's been all good. So second stage separation and ignition. RCS can stop the roll here. And this has lit engine 2 vacuum, looking good. So we got a bunch of stages to get us over to Venus and then get into orbit around Venus. This stage will help initially, we'll still have some fuel left in it. And then the next stage, we have packed quite a lot. Hopefully this will safely get into the orbit that is required. It does detect that this is a new probe that can generate power and has an antenna. Speaking of antennas, popping those out. Lots of little dishes, because <laughs> those are CubeSat antennae. Okay, and shut down. 201 by 191, so far so good. 1,219 meters per second left in this stage. So let's see. Targeting Venus. Using Maneuver Planner. ASAP, let's say. Seems like a good time. Uh, in fact, the lowest and the ASAP are identical, so that is a good time. All right, and that will get us over there. 155 kilometer periapsis, it says. 
Now, the orbits we want to get into are a little bit complicated, and this pass isn't going to do a good job of that, but we can correct that during a mid-course adjustment. Well, we should have good communications. Our maneuver is pretty close to the west coast there. Okay. And settling fuel down. And ignition. Okay, so off we go to Venus. Okay, and let's not have the RCS thrusters firing just in case we hit the next stage. Let's separate and then ignite. Okay. Okay, we are high over the United States. And let me just follow this. There we go. All right, shut down. And let's see what we need to do. Oh, we've got a moon flyby there. Accidental moon flyby. It's not throwing things off too much. Well, we have an encounter. Let's just add the mid-course adjustment and see what adjusting needs to be done. Well, even with the mid-course adjustment, this doesn't seem like it's getting any better. I guess we'll just uh, capture loose and then try and correct at a high altitude. Okay, well, it doesn't seem to want me to click the red orbit, which is the one that's after we flatten out. But flattening out only costs like 500 meters per second. So as long as we can pull that apoapsis down to the right level with the remaining oh, 5,500 or so, we should be in good shape. So we'll take this for now. And I'm going to add this alarm. And we will launch the surface mission, which is going to be the most interesting one. Okay, here we go with the Venus surface probe. We've lined up, throttle up, SAS is on. Looks like on this one we're lighting all three at once. Well, we'll just turn more vigorously and make that work out for us, I suppose. So, ignition. And launch. And yep, yeah, very vigorous. Either way could possibly work better. I'm not too sure whether we should go for the high thrust weight ratio or go for the higher ISP by reserving the second stage. It's a toss up. And separation and fairing set for some reason. Probably not the best thing to do right there, but anyway. Doable. Don't do that in real life. We survived. Looks like we'll have a Mars probe maneuver to take care of. Got one of the always out dishes, but maybe... Yeah, we've got some additional antennae down there. That's the relay thing. Okay, separation and ignition and RCS to stop the roll. Okay, and... Shut down, 240 by 220, and we've got 1,668 meters per second left. Of course, this doesn't require as much because that's getting dumped into the atmosphere, and then this makes whatever orbit it can make, and that'll be fine. So, yeah, the whole thing is that the surface probe can't blow up. <laughs> that's, that's the most important thing. I don't know. I don't know. Now, for one thing, putting the procedural tanks and the heat shield together, that's always problematic, but we'll see. It ought not to be, but... Okay, maneuver planner again. Reset. ASAP. Looks good. Alright, we'll just do exactly what it's got, and then we'll do a mid-course adjustment, as with the previous satellite. Okay, setting fuel down and ignition and off we go again all right shut off for a sec there separation and ignition and our trusty little 12 kilonewton thruster which you have put we have put a lot of use to yep well we've got all these data units still collecting them though we haven't reached 10,000 or anything 
but I was confused. The interstellar magnetic nozzle, I guess, is something KSB Interstellar puts on everything, just like the Mega Jewels. They do not seem to have any effect on these engines. Okay, that's probably as good as we're gonna get there. Let's see. Make sure we're not crashing into the moon or anything. Okay. Looks like this time we don't even encounter it. Oh, but we also don't encounter Venus right now. Whoops. Well, that looks like cause for a mid-course adjustment. Eh, it's not gonna line up with anything, is it? No, and we have to aim for that reddish one. It's going to be... Oh, no, this is not the satellite. No, we don't have to aim for that reddish one. Back. Doesn't really matter. Okay, how much will it take to capture? So we're gonna do a 788 meter per second burn to correct. No, well, it's everything we've got. So, uh, but but actually, the little probe will be released prior to the main satellite trying to make orbit. So we'll have more delta v with the main satellite. Well, but then we're gonna be losing the fuel in the probe. Uh, unless that's locked, it's not. So, I don't know how... Maybe it's not calculating that at all anyway. Yeah, it isn't. So that's separate. We should have more Delta V, I think. But, I'm not sure. Okay, so anyway, we have a mid-course adjustment with this, and we'll work on that. That, and we need to get the other satellite underway. Okay, last launch before we go into mission management mode. This is satellite number two. And we will light all three engines at the same time, I think. I think that worked out just fine last time. So, throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. And I like the thrust weight ratio, so. And booster set. Whoa, that's vigorous. No spin this time after the booster decoupling. Anyway. Ignition of the second stage. I'll turn RCS on anyway. Alright, and... Shut down, 237 by 205, 1,274 meters per second left. 10,000 meters per second overall. Seems like it ought to be enough, doesn't it? Okay, the same ASAP node. Up, oh, I'm a little bit late here. Go. Okay, and separation and ignition. Well, seems a bit closer. All right. Make course adjustment again. And once again, there isn't much hope that we can get into a very convenient approach. Still a huge gap there between our target orbit coming in. Uh, anyway, we capture. Okay, so that one we'll just put in. All right, so everything's on its way, but we have to focus on the Mars probe next, so let's jump to that. There's just a Mars flyby, nothing too complicated this. Right here, I think it's just a mid-course adjustment. Yeah, and its actual arrival at Mars will be after the Venus satellites actually arrive at Venus, so it's going to be a while for it. Let's just take care of what it needs to have taken care of. Not a whole lot of Delta V in here, but again, just a flyby. I wonder if there's any science to be done. All recovery science. Um, well, this seems worse. Wait a second. We're pointing directly at the sun. We are each. Oh, it's the same time warp issue. Darn it. Okay, we'll time warp in the tracking station. Okay, well, here we go for the correction. Uh, 
Well, I think we can be satisfied with that. 5,000 kilometers. And we had to do 20,000, so that's well within our margin. So, okay, it's on its way, and we'll check up on it when it enters the SOI. And just to be clear about things, we will once again orient for sunlight. Okay, just in case, we'll keep it safe. All right, so that's got its maneuver. I mean, it's uh, SOI change, and we can focus on the Venus satellites. Okay, close enough. Correction number one. Go. All right, so it's on its way. Check up on it when it arrives. Uh, well, that's actually the maneuver. We should add the SOI change instead. Okay, next. Okay, correction for the surface probe. All right, and that SOI change is queued. And the last one. Okay, last one. Uh, okay, no, no, stop. Ah, I forgot the smart ASS. When you're hovering over the smart ASS thing, it uh, prevents you from doing input. Even my joystick input doesn't work while my cursor is over the smart ASS thing. Well, that looks pretty much what we were looking for. All right, so that SOI change. Right, and this one will actually be first, so everything is going in reverse, or reverse order. Basically, the thing that you launch last arrives first, so this is how it's going to be. All right. Okay, so our first satellite has entered Venus SOI. While it's doing its business, the second one will arrive, as the surface probe will arrive. We just have time for capture, but first we should check whether it's arriving on the communication side of Venus here. Oh, it, it hasn't quite entered Venus, that's why it's one minute prior. Okay, let's just get it in there. Okay. Now, it is coming in like that, which looks like the opposite side than we want. Right? Yeah. We probably want, okay, focus on Venus here. Um, seems like that's Earth, and this is the opposite side. So we actually want to switch sides here. Periapsis is going to be an inconvenient location, because we really want to capture up here. Ugh. So like we're coming in like that, and that's better. <laughs> I guess the question is whether this thing will keep calm. So we could probably start the capture over here after that, finish the capture over here. And that could keep things okay. We'll try that. All right, it's a little bit awkward. I mean, it's not a long burn time that we have. So that's a positive. We are also approaching pretty high. We've got a periapsis of 3,000 kilometers, so we're not going to accidentally dip into the atmosphere. We've got a support comm thing over there. But I think the plant might... Eh, we might be able to communicate with that at periapsis. I am willing to risk that question. Let's see. Okay, we don't have a direct line back, but we have communication support. So, okay, we're good. Retrograde. And let's go with it. The other probe, the surface probe, isn't going to be able to make a correction, but we had it pretty well set before. Should have probably taken a look at it as it entered the SOI though. Okay, that's the end of that stage, which will head back out into interplanetary space. Okay, separation.
Okay, we have captured and looks like it'll leave us with about 4,000 meters per second in the end. I think I'll take a two week period for now. Again, the higher it is, the better it is for the inclination correction that we will have to do. We might as well plot that now. Well, I'll leave that be for now. That will work for a start. Uh, it's sooner than I thought it would be. Um, maybe that's not the location I want it to happen at. We'll see. We'll go with that for... Uh, four days is too soon. Just go ahead and do something at Apoapsis, which will give us some more time. Oh, but that doesn't look like it's anywhere near where we want it. Okay. Maybe we'll start off with that and figure out what else we have to do. Okay. So, to this one, which was delayed. Most important thing right now is get the... It looks like we're pretty good. 382 kilometers is not bad. So, we just need to plop off the surface probe in the right direction. And let's make sure that we are in a calm, happy direction. We don't have to get into any particular orbit, so for this one we should probably just switch over to the side that is more beneficial. Oh, it might be too late though. We're so close in. It's gonna cost 816. Mm, let's not do that. Okay, so we're going to have to rely on comms with other stuff. Just in case, we're going to make sure this is all set up properly. I think 80 kilometers will be fine for bringing us down, but I'll go 75. Okay, separation. Okay, well that was a feistier separation than I was expecting. Let's get back to 75 here. Now, we're going to turn surface negative. I want that command in. And I want the parachutes armed. Okay, so that's 75 all prepared. This was the remaining thing. And this should boost back up. In fact, right there will be fine. Um, we'll do this first. Make sure that we get this captured first. Okay, so this will do this maneuver in 7 hours and 20 minutes, and won't take very long. 2 minute stage. And this is going to hit the atmosphere in 7 hours, uh, a little bit less than 7 hours and 46 minutes. Okay, we'll follow this in first. Okay, capture maneuver. Okay, that... Should be good enough, a four day period and everything. Okay, but we need to get back to the actual surface probe. All right, well, let me execute that and hopefully things will work out even if we don't have comms. I didn't really put much by way of solar panel re on here though. But it's got enough electric charge for what we needed to do. Have ablation. Oh, not the tank. It all blew up. <laughs> uh, why does it always all blow up? <laughs> okay, I should just not put the procedural tank directly onto the heat shield. I tried to distance it, but no. Okay, well, we have other things to deal with. Let's get that next satellite in. Okay, so this one currently doesn't seem like it has a very good periapsis because it hasn't entered the SOI yet, so that's okay. So, as far as communications go, I think we'll have comms through that photon up there once we reach periapsis. If not, we can just pick up Earth afterwards and do the whole capture more painfully. Mm, we do have comms. And ignition. 
Someday one of these things is gonna fail on me and get me, but it's a long meantime before failure. Uh, we've lost communication, but that's... Um, don't know why, but I guess it turns out line of sight wasn't perfect with that thing. But we can expand this stage and it'll be alright, so... As long as we can ignite, it's fine. Okay, that got expended and it has captured us. Um, perhaps a little bit lower than I wanted, but it'll be okay. Let's uh, just focus on this one for now. I think we can get up to Apoapsis, do a correction, and figure things out, so... The good thing is that Apoapsis will definitely have comms. So, he'll dispose of this stage. It'll have to remain in orbit around Venus, though. So let's shut that down and separation. Okay. Okay, I can't even figure out where Venus is right. Oh, there it is. There, Venus. All right, then we're doing this, and maybe we'll get it done before we have to turn to the next thing. And ignition. So we need to get this into its intended orbit, which is, I think, an equatorial orbit. So it's this equatorial orbit one. 454.7 kilometers circular equatorial. So we're looking for that inclination to go down to zero, basically. It's a little bit high on the periapsis. As long as we're within one degree of the Intended inclination, it should be fine, I think. Uh, we'll just fix that first. Try and get as close as possible. Now they can't argue with point two, and then go retrograde a bit. Eh, more or less spot on. Okay. So, but this is not a good orientation for sunlight. Now oh, it's depleting electric charge even at five x. Uh, not five x, but the fifth time more. Warp. Think. No, hibernate and warp is manual. Maybe if I put it auto. No. Oh. Does sort of. We really need comms though if we're gonna do this burn here. No. Doesn't look like we're gonna have it this time around. Oh, we've picked it up. Okay. Well, we'll try it. We better start now. Eh, we might need more than one go around. It depends on whether I can keep the periapsis up. Okay, yeah, we'll keep it there. We'll try again on a next pass. Looks like it's still before the next satellite needs attention. It's that Venus satellite right there that's head up to Apoapsis, so. Well, we do not have communication right now. Okay, well, we'll have to wait for the next orbit. Okay, we've picked up the satellite. I think we can finish it off on this round. Even though we're late at starting the burn. So... It's a very tenuous line, but it'll get better as we burn, so it should be safe. Well, okay, that's getting a little bit rough. I, I don't suppose that's good enough for you, is it? Nope. It's not a reasonable deviation. Okay, so... Maintain stability, but it's not a reasonable, reasonable deviation. So, let's... Okay, it's accepted it. It just needs to see that we're stable. All right, we have fulfilled that one. Let's go to the other one. Okay. Now this ply maneuver isn't exactly the best. We'll see what it does for us. It won't get us exactly the inclination that we want. Well, basically what I've got plotted there will take all of our delta V. We could do it a different way, though. 
it's not showing me the actual inclination difference after doing that, but I think that maneuver is better. So we'll do that first, and then after doing that, pull the orbit down and get what we want. Okay, and that will, well, we'll have enough. We will have enough. Well, the Mars probe isn't for a while, so let's just get this done. We are not going equatorial this time. Desired inclination it says 28.3 degrees. Our desired orbit is also not circular. Okay, well, it should be close enough, but we'll get to that 28.3 degrees. Okay. So, next, using our orbit. Uh, that doesn't look like the right time. What? How did that happen? Oh, still looks good once we put it back in the right place. Okay, okay, node. How's our communication? It looks fine. We've got that satellite there. That's a really handy satellite, that photon. Okay, ignition. A little bit late here. They're sort of doing a radial thing, so it's complicated. We are expecting the periapsis to go down, and what we want is 3138 on the apoapsis and 2172 on the periapsis. It's like the pivot point. I think that apoapsis is going down too fast though. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's happy with that. Alright. Maintaining stability. I guess maintaining stability does not include time warp. Okay. Uh, Alright, so we got those two done. The surface of Venus was the thing I wanted most though. That's hard, especially when the tank behind the heat shield keeps blowing up. We'll have to think about that. Anyway, why don't we just get that Mars probe in through its flyby, get that done as well. Well, we're a lot closer than I was expecting. Only 448 kilometers on the periapsis. We are in Mars SOI. So, that's fine. Uh, I think collect science around Mars, any science, so let's see. We've got 0.8 science for this gravity scan high over Utopia Planitia, I think it is. All right, we've got the science. It doesn't matter whether the science is done at 20,000 kilometers, apparently. So we just need to fly by, and right now we are poised to fly by. Let's do so convincingly. Okay, we have performed the Mars flyby as prescribed. There's, again, a 0.8 science thing. We've done all these before, it's just that we had some impediments to completing the Mars flyby in particular. We don't have enough Delta V in order to capture. So it'll just fly by and proceed. Uh, and we've got a new one here, Arabia Terra. We can transmit that. So we got some bonus science. All right, so with that, two successful Venus missions and one successful Mars flyby mission, one unsuccessful lander for Venus. Yeah, and I probably messed up the same way previously. I just don't remember it. But anyway, we got some stuff done. Next time we will continue with the lunar mission stuff. We've uh, you know earned our money, so we can afford some more hardware for that and try and get maybe the science data from surface of the moon will be brought back back by a Kerbal hopefully so anyway that is our goal next time for now thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time